All right, welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Morris. I'm Doug. <laughs> We're all on our way back from Origins Game Fair. Yeah, where apparently, uh, contrary to what I thought, you can't get much editing done at the same time because these guys won't hold still and talk <laughs> to a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, we had to maximize time, so this is how it is. Anyways, Morris, you probably should do the thing. On the road, the thing. <laughs> care that you're driving. <laughs> oh, there's 18 wheels and big rig. But we figured we'd uh, throw our thoughts in while we were still fresh in our minds on the way back. Yeah, things that we really liked. Um, let's start off with favorites to put you guys both on the spot. Uh, Doug, do you have a favorite from stuff that we were doing on con? Hmm. I would probably have to split it two ways. One was actually not a game I played through Origins, but a game uh, that's available at Origins, and one of our uh, one of our fellow uh, attendees brought uh, terraforming Mars. Mm. Uh, it's it's not your typical resource gathering game. It's you're actually uh, placing tiles, trying to uh, trying to control as much of Mars as possible. Uh, even though I lost and was in fact last, I really enjoyed it. You. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of car. It's, uh, shit. How do I describe it? Basically, you're terraforming Mars. You've got cards to play to improve your various resources, and those resources go into either plants and building uh, and terraforming the forests, placing oceans, raising the temperature, uh, raising the oxygen level, and or and uh, there's various different ways you can earn victory points. I actually pursued a technological space victory, uh, which didn't work out for me, but I also, you also really cannot, uh, what do you want to say, neglect the actual terraforming and city building, which I did. Uh, First time playing, uh, rookie mistake, but it was a lot, it was pretty interesting, pretty fun. The other one that I'm going to have to say that I liked better than I thought I would is the Pathfinder 2 playtest. I'm not going to touch on it too deeply because we're going to get deep into that, mm-hmm. but uh, I liked it. I liked Pathfinder before. Uh, I played a Paladin, and the and I didn't miss what I thought I'd miss, and I'll leave it right there. Mike? Me? Jeez, uh, that's a... Yeah, I will definitely agree with you on the Pathfinder 2 podcast. Uh, or podcast, yeah, yeah uh, playtest. That was actually pretty fun. Uh, I played Ezra and the Wizard. I, it was pretty interesting. I'll leave it at that as well, because uh, we probably ought to go into depth for once some more. We get more information on that anyways. Uh, I actually really liked playing that Mordheim game, even though we really sucked at it. <laughs> uh, it was still kind of fun. It was kind of nifty. We played dwarves, and we were very undwarf-like, apparently. Uh, that was pretty cool. Oh, absolute favorite thing is the Adventuria stuff, but we also have a a special that we're going to do on that, so I'll leave it to that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, the Shadow Fist was pretty cool. Um, learned to play Shadow Fist. We all got a deck for playing Shadow Fist, because that was pretty neat. Uh, after that, I don't really... Mean, that's, you know, we did quite a bit of stuff. I mean, I enjoyed it all, but yeah, those were my favorites. <laughs> Shadow Fist was a game that came out oh, a man. long time ago. Well, yeah, we played. Yeah. So it was uh, at least uh, it was around the time of Magic: The Gathering. They had said I saw on my cards art as old as 1995. So that's one of the weird things. Shadow Fist, by the way, folks, was one of the ones I was going to list too uh, that I really liked. And that's weird. Like my my learning this year was is like I don't besides just Adventuria, which we'd learned about last year. 
I really don't hate card games as much as I thought I did. It's just like I need a card game with something to orient. So Shadow Fist was like we're taking elements of, of like what's in the plot of Big Trouble in Little China, uh, tweaking it to have its own flavor. And then you've got these different rival factions who are all competing, you know, or different degrees of shade and light. And uh, very, very uh, Asian-y oriented, Lotus Blossoms and you know, what have you, very tech oriented, uh, undead, like I was playing an undead hand, which is another thing that seems to be a, a thing for me. And when we were playing Mordheim was also a lot of fun. Um, like, I'm kind of sorry that I beat up on the dwarves and killed their leader with my undead army and this, this warg-like creature that I had. But on the other hand, I'm not, because they started something with me. It was very satisfying. <laughs> I was, my goal was to get to Rob, who was across the table playing humans, and then we had two guys that we didn't know who were playing orcs. Uh, orcs and, and goblins. And I was trying not to beat up on them because I don't know them, and the, the runner of the game had said to us right before the GM's like, uh, orcs and goblins always have bad luck at this. It has always been his experience. So it's like, Eh, I'm gonna go easy on them. I'm gonna pick on the people I know. Rob and I never met in a conflict by the time the turns were over. And, like, despite uh, Doug and Mike thinking maybe they didn't do too good, passing a truck, it happens. <laughs> Doug, and, Doug and Mike might think that they didn't do too good. Uh, like, it felt from my end as overpowered as, as my. Uh, Wolfie was the name on the sheet for the character was uh, it or it just it was like a battle of the juggernauts to me because I always see it from the viewpoint of I'm probably outmatched here and they had taken purchase in a bombed out building with uh, like they were up high and were able to fire on me and I'm like I've got to break their jaw quick or they're going to finish me off. Like, screw, hit the glass jaw. I've got to break them. Well, I did really well. <laughs> I apparently broke them enough that they were crippled for the rest of the game. Um, and, uh, yeah, who was, who was, was it the goblins and orcs that ultimately took it? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. So, well, they found thought, multiple weird stones. And oh, they, you were in the lead more. Oh, was did? I? Yeah. yeah, four to three. Okay, yeah, but it was. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Because uh, you took out our leader. I don't have. The, I didn't have the you sheet got, on. You got I two got it. For the leader. I got it by like one point because I took out their leader was two points. I had uh, uh, gotten like two resources. Looking around, otherwise. Uh, the weird stone. Yeah, weird oh. stone. The uh, orcs and the goblins did get. The, the magic MacGuffin on there of the weird stone, but it wasn't enough to boost them above me. Because they got the treasure chest and those, but they didn't kill anybody. Yeah, and then the fun thing about this was the GM will, will, will like fix the armies afterward was his thing, but he was running a continuity in his battle, which I thought was kind of cool, but also kind of weird. Whereas, like, uh, undead can raise anything from the dead. Uh, and the even the other units can regenerate themselves, but like we we stuck around a little bit afterwards. He let us roll for the fate of my uh, was it Wolfie or Fido? I'll put Wolf, up the yeah the and picture that, and our our dwarf character. I'll put up dark. the picture of what the the sheet said if I can find it in my stuff. Anyway, like um, he, I remember what happened, but yeah, you know, well I don't he, remember what happened. Here. My, uh, my dog died. <laughs> yeah, your, my dog your died. Wolf died. Yeah, your wolf died. Uh, uh, our leader took a sucking wound, so he took a minus one to health. Health for the yeah. rest of the tournament, and our crossbowman died, died. Yeah. But they, they said dwarves get a decent amount of money for the next round to basically recruit a new one. And recruit people, yeah. So that probably wasn't much of an issue. Say, I killed their guy, yes. But he kicked my dog. <laughs> uh, 
What are you, John Wick? Kick you he, you he kicked my your, dog. We missed your dog because he didn't die. Uh, you tell your father I'm going to shoe him. <laughs> oh, that's from that. <laughs> I think it's jerky, jerky boys. boys yeah. Anyway. <laughs> No, moving on from that, um, well, we're taking a long time of my my favorites, but it's like I liked Mordheim, um, I liked Shadow Fist, uh, Pathfinder was okay. Like I don't know what the like interaction the was. Playing, so that really didn't help you much. Uh, well, I wanted to find out what he was like, and we'll discuss that more in a later episode. But uh, or well, this episode we'll worry about this episode. Right. Um, so actually, screw it. I uh, I got to put my hands on uh, one of the new goblins. Goblin alchemist. Uh, yeah, we're doing alchemists now. Um, I it's not a character that I would build, so it's rough for me to to think. He's well balanced, but he's not at all in my direction. Um, quick alchemy stuff that you can blend things together and use them right away. Um, balance seems okay. I didn't contribute much to the fight, but that's just because of my play style and like we only really went against like a wave of undead right. was the thing um I don't I don't have a lot of reservations at this point about uh, where Pathfinder's going from 2.0 it's I like most of what they did with it I like the way the wizard played out um he didn't feel underpowered at all mm -hmm. I mean I took a skeleton out and I took half the boss guy out so you know I mean, uh, I was very careful not to get into melee, but I, holy crap, I had 16 hit points at the first level, so yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't feel squishy at all. Yeah, uh, like even the, the goblin wasn't as far behind everybody else as I thought he would be. Like he was pretty on par with him. Uh, Sila was at 19 hit, hit points, and Valeros was at 20, 21, so there's not a huge spread at first level uh, hit point totals. Also, what was it, Falmus? Fumbus. Fumbus, thank you. Fumbus, yeah. That's, that's the new iconic name for the, the goblin alchemist. He has goggles. They appear to do nothing. Uh. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's not, like one of the things that I had problems with at the con actually is that uh, D20, now that I, I finally got into more stuff, uh, depending on who's running your game, a lot of it's like, oh yeah, I made for the combat oriented guys. Well, that's fine. But I want me some interactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I may or may not have done some inquiries into certain properties of dark eyes that I enjoy, whether or not there was a way that I could help facilitate uh, getting more stuff run for next year so that there's more, more stuff spread out. Yeah. And if that were to happen, we would give a full disclosure uh, on the podcast, anything that, like... But at this stage, it's not a worry. Yeah, it's not a worry no. <laughs> I just don't want to poison the well I drink at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, Dark Eye is still my favorite. You know, it's like we saw a lot of stuff with a lot of promise. We do every year, so that's why Origins is you know High Plane so well. Samurai. High Plane Samurai. Oh yeah, that, that was, was awesome. fantastic. You're right. Yep. I almost I forgot. I completely forgot about that. Thank so you. that's but a, it was awesome. It, oh yeah, it was cool. That's it, not an indication of how cool it was that we forgot about. It. It's an indication of our memory and that we're getting yes, old. But it's it's very mm, the con is tiresome. Oh, but so I played Samurai. It's an RPG, but it's ba it is com it's rules light. It is, and it is almost completely character per, uh, player driven. It is the DM is just there. To the DM is game. helping you tell this story. He's got a direction that he wants it to go, but. You also have, you start your uh, special abilities as sentences and you describe to him what's going on. Mm -hmm. And depending on whether you roll odds or evens, either he will tell you what happens if you succeed or fail, or you will tell him. Yep. Yeah. And of course, you're, of course, rolling against the DC, uh, but you tell the story almost the majority of it. So we got in a fight uh, behind a brothel. Uh, trying to take out this one bad guy with a porcelain mask, though. No, no, that sounds uh, bad. Dollface, I think is what her name was. Yeah, right? Dollface, she was, uh, I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to find out what was under that mask. And, and it took me did. a really, it took, it took me a really a long time. The old members of the combat, which and was, you people what, two can, hour combat? 
uh, Rob, I, what, about the point that I decided I wanted to know what was under that mask, and I, I wanted her not to be killed outright because the way I usually work in these things is like, I want to commune with the characters and see if we can get some people to repent their evil ways. Or, you know, just do evil things for me. Anyway, the important part is that I was an outlaw anyhow. And that we pushed it to the point where I think uh, I, I was saying that I have developed a new fetish at this brothel. <laughs> it's like doll face people getting uh, dudes set on fire and somehow miraculously surviving. Um, it's like I must know. I must know, kind of like that old uh, SNL skit, Pat. It's like, I must know what has me so turned on, whether it's male or female, under the mask. Oh my god. The, like, the poor kid who was the nephew of one of the game designers was running this, and uh, he, he was having bad luck that day. He'd locked some stuff in the room he needed for source material. And then he got us to play. Yeah. That is probably the height of his bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> It took us a while I don't to get know, rolling. He was pretty entertained because yeah. we were just we were off the walls on this game. We, we were, were all just, to the point where it got. We, we were, were laughing flipped. so much we were almost choking. Um, mostly like, with, mostly <laughs> with stuff that, you know, probably family damn, appropriate stuff. Damned him, <laughs> damned him to hell. Yes. <laughs> so hey, he's still got time to repent. He's young. <laughs> <laughs> so so the actual interest. So here's. The, the actual interesting part for Shadow uh, High Plane Samurai for me was that it's, it's completely player driven so we're in this fight and I'm playing uh, oh. kind of like a, you know the femme fatale uh, ninja oh, no. we're not going to get into the accent I was using oh, oh, but yeah. it was bad to the point of it was bad to the point of being insulting to an entire continent but uh <laughs> So we, he gave us choices at the time we were <laughs> playing this too, where it's like we could have uh, the voice that he was doing, which was so grating, or he would do us the honor of switching to Kung Pao, and we could have chosen one, wee -oh, wee -oh, wee. And I'm like, if you do that, I will kill you. <laughs> like in game for sure. Real life, maybe I will kill you. So, so anyway, I will not. I will not be repeating it here, so that it does not come back to haunt me. Yeah, but, wise. But uh, so it was completely player driven. So we're in the middle of this battle, and you know, normally in a in a game, you have whatever's on your character sheet or whatever the DM describes is in the room to fight with. But that's not the case in this game. It's player driven. You make it up. You oh, make I it see up. A you know. Yeah, so we're in a Wild West town fighting behind an old-timey brothel, and I say, you know what? Uh, there's, shoe, there's shoe horses sitting over there on a hitching post, and... Uh, Horseshoes, I think you mean, instead of shoe horses. Yeah, sorry. Tired mistake. <laughs> so we're all going on about five hours of sleep or less a night. Yeah, and I'm, this, also, so. I'm, also, I'm also the one driving... <laughs> Uh, and he's got to pay attention to the road. And this road just the yeah, road construction. Just this is uh, live podcasting, folks. So yeah. Um, hey, oh, so yeah. There's horseshoes on this hitching post over there, and I, my character had telekinesis. So I say I reach out with my telekinesis. Yeah, yank them off the post, and I and I try to manacle her with them, like uh, each of her arms, yeah, arms and legs, slinging those uh, horseshoes around her arms and legs. Yeah, and that didn't work. And then, uh, unfortunately. But then later on, I'm like, you know what? It's an old-time uh, Wild West town. There's a town bell in the middle of somewhere. And I reach out, and I yanked that bell down with my telekinesis, and I crushed Morris, who was invisible. Uh, but if it had worked, it would have been pretty cool. So some genuinely bad stuff happened to my character. And another weird thing about this game is that if you want to uh, add complications, which makes it harder for uh, certain things to be done by other characters, i.e. the villain you're up against, you can spend, what, stamina to you can spend vitality stamina. for it. Okay. You yeah. can hit see, points. It's basically your hit points. You can see the problem with this right away. <laughs> At the time the bell incident happened, which don't worry, folks, we will rewind, I was down to one hit point. I maybe shouldn't have lived... 
But the GM let me narrate my way out of it. <laughs> a, a man who has uh, the ability to, to neither being seen nor heard was one of the things I could oh, yeah, start my invisible. sentence with. And I could go invisible at will was one of my abilities. Uh, Mike, incidentally, was playing a woman who could Nordic, create... A Nordic chick that you, you shoot uh, ice out of her body, basically. Yeah, freeze whatever she wanted. So, uh, I did a lot of neither being seen nor heard, which had, I think, a D8 to it. There was another ability I had that had only, like, a D6, which yeah, is escaping D8, my mind right now. So. Um, and uh, that, you know, for balance reasons. Uh, I think mine was what uh, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry with yes. my D8, and there must be balance, which, which was my D6. One. There must be balance. Um, incidentally, you also have minor things about your character, like Mike's was that he could not um, wuss out on anything. Basically, he had to prove his worth. Mm-hmm. Mine was I was a kleptomaniac. You can see where that'll re- lead to some problems too. Also, yeah. <laughs> the gunslinger that Rob was playing had the ability. Um, oh, yeah to like get me out of trouble because we were friends uh so like we had something of a rapport that he immediately nothing ruined will stand in my way is the one nothing I will stand in. i was getting there yeah, I um so i at this point we're trying to track down dollface we found her i set the building on fire because uh rob was getting frustrated that nobody would give him answers at the front uh bar and he wanted to set the place on fire. And I told him before, is like, if we're going to do something, I know our play styles are similar and we could butt heads. Like, we got to do freaking improv rules. Is like, <laughs> yes, and... Rob was not very good at following this rule. I was somewhat. So, he decides, once we have fast-forwarded through her surviving the flames, all her henchmen being dead, and... Me having pickpocketed uh, the the satchels of several of the ladies of the night out front, just to see what was inside. Don't ask. Uh, and coming up with daggers and gold, which yeah, they're um, basically assassins. I yeah, guess. working for Dollface presumably. Yep. And threatening to open a rival brothel next door got us nothing, so I decided to help set the building on fire. Started. The, the building on fire. Well, we tried to we tried to give new prostitutes too because yeah, me and Doug were both women. So. Yeah, that's why we're going to uh, put up the alternate brothel yeah. across the street because they refused. Mm-hmm. But right, um, yeah. yeah, so buildings and flames. I want to find out what's up with this chick because from the get go, I had the internal out of character player mode of it's like I want to learn as much about this character as I can before we kill her. Which is a common weakness that I have whenever we're playing D20 or whatever. Um, so I want to stop Rob before he nothing gets in my way her and she's dead. So I get in Rob's way to see what is under her mask. I thought Rob would play along. Because, yes, and... No, the son of a bitch shot me through the shoulder. <laughs> well, he, you were in his way, so. Nothing gets in my... He didn't even have to do that. He just wanted to do that. Oh, yeah. So, his character pretty good, though. Yeah. I oh, could yeah, have... Uh, it fit your well. shoulder even better. Mm. I could have <laughs> retaliated. I chose not to. And uh, what resulted then was a downward spiral... That it's resulted in in yeah. the GM of telling me you are the you played the most sad and pathetic invisible man I have ever seen. You did play like, it to the hilt. <laughs> oh, God, I did. Yes. You really trumped that one up. Like I was tripping over myself to keep her alive and get that mask off because I had to know. You had to know. And yes, like I was. Lady love. I was nevering, uh, have I, or yeah, never have I ever. I was never, not being neither seen nor heard, uh, doing this and that. And I was going into spinning the, the best yarns I could of narration, where it's like my breaking heart neither being heard nor my, my pro- shattered pride neither being seen. 
because I am crawling up off of the floor invisible. I must know what is underneath that mask so my burning need drives me. Roll the die. Fail again. Mm. And, and the funny thing is that she knocked her own mask off finally to the point where you could actually see her. Yeah, I think he... I, I think he, he threw you a bone. He threw me a bone because I was Which not going to cool. give up and the dice were not playing along with us. It took us a long one to get that run rolling. It degenerated again in the end. But by the end of the night, I was asking them where they were selling it. And by the next day, I was buying it. So it again, system, yeah. just because we forgot of what the name of it was and all of the things that yeah, we it played. It does not mean it wasn't cool. Yeah. Just, yeah my, my brain is in you know, shutdown mode yet. There's so much of that at Origins. It's like, oh, it's so cool, but there's only so much time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a good game. I, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah. I'm not used to that much narration, which was kind of different for me, but it was pretty cool all the same. It was awesome! Just every round, I reached into hammer space and I picked out a new weird uh, Asian weapon to use. Oh yeah, you were pulling out Kasuri Gamas and everything else. Hell yeah! And and that's the thing, at one point, uh, I think, was it you or it was you that asked if there's a tree nearby? Mm -hmm. uh, Which the narrator said, yeah, and so you tried to throw her into the tree, and I pulled out the Kasari Gama, whipped it around a branch of the tree, swung to try and kick her, missed. I was having some real dice trouble at that point. Yeah, uh, I just had really horrible dice with that. But it's just, the system begs. It, it is open, begging and pleading for you to do, well, like, cool uh, cool cinematic stuff. Yes. Because there's no, there's no like trouble or requirement to take a million feats to do whatever it's it's, it's just whatever you describe written on your character yeah it, you it specifically there. says that it wants you to go cinematic this one has a setting but kind of like what I've seen in the fate system before there's multiple different settings there's actually a clean slate one where it's just the direction of it uh, that like they do scenes and shots for this was one some of the terminology thrown around uh, it's a relatively new thing, and I've not had a chance to actually look at the source material yet. But I, as a person who likes film, am really attracted to that. Um, I like narratives. I'm really attracted to building your own narrative along with the GM. Um, if you have like-minded people who want to do something creative, that can be a lot of fun for you. Um, yeah, like the one thing that I will knock the GM, which, hey, he's new, uh, was that he needed to make clear to us at the beginning is like, no, you are driving the story just as much as I am. Uh, and that, like, we would have gotten started a lot faster. I honestly think after the first initial here's the setup, here's the vague plot line, it's like 90% player driven. Yeah, It really is. And it, it's great. It is. It kind of did devolve into a bit of a, yeah. a big eyes, small mouth between you and Rob by the end of it, though. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> He's the one that pulled out a grenade launcher. Yes, but you're the one who pulled out ridiculous weapons, and that gave him the idea that he could pull out a grenade launcher. Probably. I, pull, I was Asian, and I pulled out Asian weapons. I used, well, okay, it did start with, I pulled out Shuriken, and then a Kasari Gama, which is a small chain-like weapon. That I believe could be fit, fill, uh, fit underneath, Asian weapons. underneath a form-fitting. Uh, I mean, the, the only just, pack I even even you know worked with was my Gladius that I had. You also used uh, your icicle power to pretty good yeah, effect. But my icicle power did not hit once. Well, you're you're using the same die. It's a D8. Just no, like, it did hit once. Yeah. Which, that was the one we will not describe in this podcast. So because <laughs> that was the little. Uh, probably a two man boy kind of thing going on there but yeah I forget that one is probably good uh, that was the cleavage stun one uh, okay <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> so uh, that's, yeah. we'll leave it at that whoa, 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 whoa. I pulled out a Kasari Gama and you're like Doug is your fault and then Mike did that but that knife Mike's one of those dumb blonde bimbos at the end of the day who thinks they can solve everything with body parts. I'm just saying that. 
It worked! <laughs> she took a point of damage! Uh, <laughs> I figured nothing else was working, so I was gonna go as crazy as I possibly could. Uh, I do have to admit, usually the those women are right at the end of the day also. <laughs> Yeah, you well, can solve everything. I guess I shouldn't complain because my p character at the end of the day was finding new fetishes and ended up under a buxom blonde, so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Don't, man, don't mention the ladies' garments on your on your head. No. Hey, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> fine. You want to tell the people at home? No. I, I, I did a pantsu thing. Because you were a maniac. It was within character. It, it, it was, was within character. It was yeah. required by character. It was, you know, I thought it'd be funny, which it totally was. Prove me wrong. It and was funny. I used them to start a fire, but not too many because you need to save those because they're worth something, if Somebody. to no one else, to me. <laughs> <laughs> and and... like one of the things I had learned about kleptomaniacs when I looked up the terminology uh, to, to you know for my expanding my vocabulary is apparently. Kleptomaniacs don't really give a crap whether something really is worth wow, something. Know, just as long as it's shiny, basically. Yeah, just so long as they can, it's something somebody else might want and they can have it. So. That's pretty much it, yeah. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, this is going to be a long car ride yet, so you better get out and stretch your legs right now. Compose your emails, send them off to Mike at volantrix at gmail.com. That's volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. You better not ask if we're there yet. Yeah. So Doug looks and smiles at the camera, and we go off the road and die. I'm hitting but, the record button. We got what we got. Mike, we're gonna do the we gonna do the part. The I would think. Intro like we normally do. We'll try. Are you gonna do like a singing intro? Sure. No. You you mouth no. along with the. We, oh, oh, oh. we just do the thing, but yeah. Yeah, easy. We just say it was time to do the thing. The thing. Yeah, that's the. And then our, I can cut music. it anywhere. I just need like a second of silence. Our music thing that we do. Uh, where are you going to get a second of silence? Mike, do you know where he's going to get a second of silence? I have no idea where he's going to get a second of silence. Morris, what? Can we hit him now? Uh, I hit him on the The longest start I think we've ever had.